Hey guys, it's Matt here, and in this video, we'll be going over why I believe the iPod mini is one of the best iPods you can get for a dedicated MP3 player. So you can see, well, I've got nothing, and that's because I want to start off with explaining a few things about some other iPods that I own. So, first off, with the options that you have for music players, and let's just say specifically with iPods, when it comes to iPod Touches, you can still buy brand new ones, like this one. This is an iPod Touch 7th generation, and you can see here, it's got the classic design that looks very similar to like an iPhone 5 of sorts. This device will run iOS 15, and honestly, it runs it pretty okay. This device is 200 bucks for the 32 gig one, and I think it's close to 500, maybe 400 for the 256 gig model. And if you need a lot of money, that is actually, <laughs> and if you need a lot of storage, that's a good option for you. However, a lot of people might not be willing to pay that much. You know, for an iPod of sorts, these get expensive for 256 gigs of storage on just an iPod touch with no cellular, no GPS, and this thing only gets texts and stuff from Wi-Fi, which for some people that could be a good thing. Plus this tiny screen is just annoying to use on iOS. So your next option would be like an iPod Nano or an iPod Classic. And unfortunately I only have the former here. So this is a Nano third generation and I do have a fifth gen somewhere. I actually should grab that. These Nanos are actually quite nice. These both have color screens. In fact, these are actually, I think the same sized screen. No, I forgot. This is actually a little bit bigger than this one is. The fourth gen has the same size screen as this one. It's just oriented differently. These iPods here aren't amazing when it comes to their storage capacities. This guy is an eight gig model and eight gigs is as high as you're gonna be able to go on one of these things. So when it comes to these nanos, well, they're cool. If you have a big music library, these aren't really going to work. And it applies to the same here. The most storage you can get on an iPod Nano, I'm pretty sure at least, is 16 gigs with the brand new touch variant. So not amazing. And if I get one of the weird ones here, which I have, this is an iPod Nano sixth generation. This also only has eight gigs of space. So these guys are really not great for big music storage. But then again, you get the tiny little compact form factor. So if you like that, well, then you get that. And then we get to the classic iPods. These are not as expensive as brand new ones, I'd say. They're still pretty up there because they're kind of a collector's item nowadays. And no, I do not have one. That's why I'm not showing anything here. These iPods, they can go up to a lot of space. The classic models can go up to 160 gigs of storage, which is a lot. However, these also have color screens, which I know for some people, they might not like that because that kills the battery. And for some people, they're like, well, I just need a device that will last a long time on battery that can play music and that's its only purpose because the color iPods can actually play video. They have like different games on them, which the monochrome screen ones do too, but not that many. Well, they also just use more power when the screens are on and you might not like that. And with the monochrome iPods, you actually do get to see like the song that's playing the entire time. The screen never shuts off. It just turns off the backlight because it's an LCD display. So if you're in like your car or something, you've got access to the song that you're playing right on your screen. If you have it clipped up to like your car next to your steering wheel or something, or like, you know, somewhere where you can see it. So what if we go back to some of the older black and white models? I don't have any of those either, unfortunately, but I do know about them to be able to explain them. You've got some of the original monochrome screen models. The first gen, and I think the second gen as well, can only take up to 20 gigs of space. Those are the ones with the not click wheel. The first one's the spinny wheel with the buttons around it. And then the second one became a touch wheel, but it's not considered the click wheel because the buttons are still on the outside. We're on like a nano. They're just like all in here. Pretty sure the third and fourth gen models still can't go up to that much of storage. I think like the fourth gen monochrome might be able to go up to 128 gigs. I will correct myself if I'm wrong. A lot of those will actually satiate people's needs because well, with those devices, 128 gigs for a music device is a lot. You could even get the iPod Touch sixth gen with that much. And if you buy if you buy used, you might actually get a good deal on all those. But however, if you want like a monochrome screen iPod that can go up to around 256 gigs of storage, and you don't want to go with something brand new like an iPod Touch 7th generation, well, you've only got one option when it comes to the monochrome display models. The iPod mini, the whole focus of this video. Now these iPods initially come with these four gig hard drives here. I've actually got it on camera. This one's dead, or at least I'm pretty sure it is. On the back, you can still see it has four gigs of space still etched into there. You can get custom covers and whatever if you do a flash mod, which I don't care. With these iPods, these can be flash modded up to 256 gigs of space. So these devices here can actually do a lot. 
Now, granted, I will correct myself here, it has to be the second generation model of these. Apple had two generations of these minis. One of them is the first gen, and one of them is the second gen. There are a couple ways you can tell apart, and I'm gonna go by the first one in case you have a silver one, because this is a fail-proof method. The copyright date on the back here says 2005. I don't know if you can read that very well. This is a second gen. This will go up to the 256 gigs of space. The first gens will only go up to 128 gigs, and they'll have a copyright date on the back of 2004. Along with, if you have a color model, the text here where it says menu, all that, all those little glyphs, that will match the color of the actual casing if you have a second gen. First gens, it'll always just be the gray color with the color of the iPod itself. And you can see here, if I actually fire up this iPod here, you see if I go to the settings of this iPod here, I've actually already flash modded this, and if you've seen the previous video on it, you'll see that. 183 gigs. This has got a 200 gigabyte SD card in here. Not a 256 gig one, it's a 200 gig, but it still works. Not the highest that these will take, but it is a lot more than I need, so I'm happy with it. These iPods are champs when it comes to their battery life. I have not charged this thing, and I've been using it solid for about 45 minutes, and the battery is still full. And this is with a used battery. I'm pretty sure a replacement battery would last even longer than this. These iPods last forever, and they're honestly super awesome. These iPods, I would say, are the kings of flash modding as well. Even though you can technically get the seventh generation iPod up to, I think like two terabytes is the highest those go. It's not stable. It really isn't usable at two terabytes. The iPod takes forever to boot from what I've heard. I don't remember the number that the seventh gens went up to before they stopped really working properly, but if you put on like, is that the 30,000 or 50,000? I think it's 50,000. If you put those, that amount of songs on there, it will freak out because the RAM will not be able to count the songs because these things are limited by their RAM, not by their storage. So you can put in a crap ton of space on a 7th gen iPod, and you could probably even do the same thing with this guy. This one might run out of RAM before I fill up the storage. If you have too many songs on that thing, it's going to cause instability. You will lose your ability to shuffle all the songs because it just won't be able to do that because it runs out of RAM. So I would say with these iPods that I would say these are probably the kings of flash modding for that reason, because these can go up to 256 gigs of space, and I don't think they have much trouble doing that either. Now, here's the fun part about these iPods, actually, and that is how easy they are to get inside. Well, easier in comparison to like a 7th gen or 6th gen iPod. You pop off the bottom, this is held on by adhesive, so make sure that you do actually have some replacement adhesive in case the original can't stick back on. The top does the same thing, make sure that's in the whole position, I actually don't know if it matters, that's just just what iFix it says. This comes off with the same adhesive and what you then do, then there's a little clip on the bottom here underneath that you pull off and then you unscrew two screws under this panel and then you just push the guts out. And it's super simple. You get into the battery and the hard drive card here, which I've got here, and you get easy access to those components. You can easily swap this guy out for something else. Even if this is working, this was dead. So it's just more of a reason to flash mod this thing because this was not starting properly and it kept only reporting like 80 megs of storage. So, you know, that's fun. But yeah, this has been my go-to classic iPod for storing music because this thing's just got a behemoth amount of space. The phone that I'm recording with right now doesn't even have as much space as this thing has. My phone that I have right now has 128 gigs. This has 200 gigabytes. This has become my dedicated music player because, well, it can just handle so much. And it's honestly really nice to have stuff locally stored on this iPod. And as I said before, with the easy repairability of these guys, although I expect to have some battle scars with it, unfortunately, this was in better condition than it was before. And you can see now it's got some dings on the bottom from when I tried to pull the thing out. It's not fun. But yeah, these will take most compact flash cards fine. And I actually have a compact flash card adapter. And even though it was one of the cheaper ones and sometimes they don't work, it works perfectly fine with this guy. I've had no issues with it. So that worked for me perfectly fine. You don't need to get one of those iFlash ones. At least in my experience, I didn't need to do that. I'll link the one in the description that I bought that worked with this thing. Might not work with your model. I don't know if it works on the first gens or whatnot, but if you have a second gen, at least for me, it worked. So ultimately, this is the iPod that I will be sticking with for probably several years down the road, and I'll keep repairing this guy as I need to, because even though these iPods are cooler and they can be more useful at times, you want to view like colors or anything really that requires like video, these guys can view like this can do pictures, no video, but this one can do video and this one actually has a camera, though it's pretty garbage. Yeah, yeah. if you just need a dedicated music device, then you've got one of these. This also has like a place where you can store your contacts. This also has a place where you can store your contacts. It's got a clock as well. This device can do a few more things than just music. It's mainly just music though. But other than that, 
These are really handy and I'd suggest going out and buying one. And the reason why I'd say that, this was not very expensive. This came with a charger cable and it came with the clip, which this iPod all in all was $48 after taxes and a charging cable that I'm currently just using somewhere else. But these devices are super nice. But yeah, this was supposed to have a working hard drive in it. It had died. So the seller gave me a partial refund on that. And the compact flash car basically was paid for by that partial refund. So this was about 50 bucks all in all for the adapter and the iPod. The SD card would probably be another $50, a bit more than that probably now. I don't know how much the 200 gig cards go for nowadays, but yeah, those cards are pretty expensive and add to the price so this would probably be around 100 110 bucks for 250 gigs of, or for 200 gigs of space that's not bad and 256 would be probably a little more but that still pales to an ipod touch which of course will have very fast storage and you know runs full ios so you have a very big advantage there but for just general music playback this guy is perfectly fine for me and the 200 gigs of space i'm sure will go a very long way especially because i don't have that much music i listen to like i said i have a Bandcamp library that i've been building up that i need to pay for i showed that in the previous video it's a lot of money that i don't want to spend right now but yeah <laughs> If you want to get into retro iPods of any kind, like with these monochrome screen ones, I'd say get a mini. The minis, in my opinion, are one of the best retro iPods you can get because they're easily flash moddable. They're easy to get into compared to some other models. And they also, out of all the monochrome iPods, these hold the most storage at 256 gigs of space. Along with their design is just kind of nice as well. So you can see it's got the anodized aluminum design that you still even see today on modern iPods. Along with these came in several different colors as well. So if you want to customize yours and not have it just be a silver color, you can get blue, green. I think there's some other ones. I don't remember what they are offhand, but I know those exist and obviously silver because I've got that one in front of me. But so yeah, to wrap this video up, this iPod is probably the most flash moddable and easy to get into iPod from like the classic era of iPods. So I would suggest getting this one. You want something like that. That's about it for this video. This is not a very long video. This is mainly just me explaining my thoughts with one of these guys here. And I for sure will be using this a lot. I've already been using this heaps and I need to load more music on it. That's about it for this video. If you liked it, well, you know what to do. You've got the like button. And if you didn't like it, then hit that dislike button, hit the subscribe button if you like the content that you see on this channel as well. You might have noticed, you probably did notice, my channel has gotten a little bit of a rebrand. I've decided to experiment a little bit with like the channel design. Hopefully you guys like the new design of stuff. If you don't, leave a comment on this video. I'll, I read all of them anyways, so. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And side tangent over. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you all later and bye guys.